Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center in USA. Welcome, everyone. We pray that this is a blessing to everyone who is with us and those who will listen much later on the archives. It is Saturday, October 16th, 2021 on the Gregorian calendar. And on the Hebrew calendar, it is Kesvan 10, the year 5782. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. I'm going to go over a few announcements with you before we get started with Shabbat service. First of all, in the upcoming week, we have our Bible study. And we have been going through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, TLV, the Tree of Life version. And this upcoming week, we are going to be doing um, the book of the first Thessalonians chapters one through five and the book of second Thessalonians chapters one through three together first and second Thessalonians is eight chapters in all. So, um, so that's why we're going to do them both together. Um, other than that, we've got our Tuesday evening live and in real time. You can come join us on freeconferencecall.com at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we meet for live fellowship. We discuss uh, issues that are going on in our world today, where they stand biblically, um, and, and have discussion. We pray about it. We do spiritual warfare prayer. We lift um, prayer requests up as well. Um, and we've done quite a, a, a number of things with this channel um, in the past. You know, we've We've done a teaching on the series of the seven churches of Revelation. Uh, we've had guests come on, musician guests. We've had writers. So if you have that particular type of a ministry or something different um, that you want to promote, please contact Yay. Pastor Noll or myself, and we will be glad to schedule a time and host you. And um, we can hold up to a thousand people on this channel. So it is very, very easy to do. And I, I do like free conference uh, call much better than Zoom uh, or any others. Um, it's so it, it's very easy to use. So you can access it by phone or by website or by Wi-Fi data. I do ordinarily post a link on our four social media channels and we are on um we are on Facebook, yes, and we are on MeWe, USA.life, and Gab. So um, if you're, come join us on all three, all, well, actually all four platforms. And of course, this gets uploaded to YouTube as well. So we are on those social media platforms. So really, that is all I have to say about announcements for now. Um, and I'm just going to open this up to our opening prayer, and we're going to start Shabbat service for the week. Avina Malkano, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you that we are here once again on Sabbath, the day that you sanctified as holy, Shabbat being Saturday, the seventh day in our week. We love you, Father God. We ask you to be in your presence. And we ask the Holy Spirit, come and guide, teach, direct, and lead us through the entire Shabbat service, blessed by your guidance, always seeking your guidance and open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be enlightened to the things that you want us to receive from the message today and take with us into our daily world in our daily walk with you, Father God. We love you. We worship you. We we worship and adore you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Exodus chapter 20, starting with verse 8. Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it, you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. 
And Father God is the ultimate Father. The, he is our creator who created the whole entire world. And he set the bar here. He set the precedence for us. For he rested on the seventh day. That is indeed what we are to do. He gave us that example as our father. Amen. Amen. Go with me now. Um, actually, we're going to, and you can follow along too with this, because the Lord's greatest commandment can be found in Deuteronomy 6, starting with chapter 6, verse 4. We're going to say the Lord's greatest commandment, the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Maputo Leolam Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. And blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children. Speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And Yeshua, Jesus, said the second greatest commandment of all, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah, standing before God, we're going to do three blessings. The first blessings is for the patriarchs, to the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all, who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name, in love, king, helper, savior, and shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion. Gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of might? And who can compare with you, O king, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish. You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. Third blessing is holiness, Kedusha. You are holy and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Emma Tavu, how lovely. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor. O God, in your great love, answer me with the truth of your salvation. In Etz Chaim, the Tree of Life Declaration, we say this of the Torah, it is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return, renew our days as of old. Bayam Hahu in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be a Chad, and his name, a Chad, and a Chad means one, composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, amen, in the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and say, amen. May his great name be blessed forever, and ever. Blessed and praised, glorified, exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world and say, Amen.
May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Neten Lanu Dvar HaKayim Mashiach Yeshua, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priests sounded the shofar to gather Benaiah Israel to worship. We are sounding it. And I'm going to pause it now for you to listen to two or three praise and worship songs. I will post praise and worship songs before I post the uploaded version of, um, of Shabbat service. And then I'll post two or three after. So the, the ones before the post would be for this, this segment. And the, and the other three would be for the second segment because this will be divided into two segments. But because of copyright infringements, I can't include them in this upload, unfortunately. But um, so I will, they will be posted. There will be songs posted um, that are very anointed and good for praise and worship for, for Shabbat service. But if you have other praise and worship songs that you would, you would prefer listening to, that's fine too. And th we will come back then and... I'm going to pause it now and then come back and begin the Torah portion. Well, welcome back from listening to Praise and Worship. Praise and Worship is very important. It is one of the most important segments of any service, whether it be the, uh, your, your church service or, or Shabbat service. Um, praise and Worship is very important. Um, we're giving praise and honor and glory to our Father in Heaven, and that is something that needs to be done. Um, something the devil doesn't like us doing because he got kicked out of heaven and is said to have been the, the praise and worship leader. So he he doesn't like when the created the, the, those that were created in the image of God are praising our Father in heaven. Um, well, too bad. So sad, devil. We're going to do it anyway because we love our Father in heaven and, and he loves to hear his children talk to him and sing to him. So that's what we will continue to do. So yes, it is very important. Now we're going to begin um, the Torah portion. And the Torah portion this, this week is in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, through Genesis chapter 17, verse 27. It's called Parashat, Parashat Lech Lecha, meaning go out or go forth. And this is dealing with Abram, who, as we know, later becomes Abraham, the parashat lech lecha, to go out or to go out. Um, Abraham obeys the calling. Then Adonai said to Abraham, get going out from your land and, and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. My heart's desire is to make you into a great nation, to bless you, to make your name great so that you may be a blessing. This is a this verse is so key and key to today as well. Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you, but whoever curses you, I will curse. And in all the families of the earth, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I'm going to say that again. I will bless those who bless you, but whoever curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So this is from Abraham. And as we know, 
this is where it all began. Um, and the 12 tribes of Israel came from Jacob, who was later named Israel, and that is the grandson to Abraham. So Abram went, just as Adonai had spoken to him, also Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions that they had acquired, and the people that they acquired in Haran, and they left to go to the land of Canaan. And they entered the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land as far as the place of Shechem, as far as Moray's big tree. The Canaanites were in the land then. Then Adonai appeared to Abram and said, I will give you, I will give this land to your seed. So there he built an altar to Adonai who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the mountain to the east of Bethel and erected his tent with Bethel to the west and I as Ai to the east. There he built an altar to Adonai and called on the name of Adonai. So Abram kept on journeying southward. Abram and Sarai in Egypt. Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to live as an outsider there because the famine was severe in the land. Just as he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, look, please, I know that you're an attractive woman. So when the Egyptians see you, they'll say this is his wife and they'll kill me. The Jew they'll let live. Please say that you are my sister so that I'll be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians did see that the woman was very beautiful. Indeed, Pharaoh's official, officials saw her and they raved about her to Pharaoh. Then the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, but Abram was treated well for, for her sake, and he got sheep, cattle, male donkeys, male and female slaves, female donkeys, and camels. That and I struck Pharaoh and his household with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, what's this that you did to me? Why didn't you tell me that she is your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Now here is your wife. Take and go. Then Pharaoh instructed men's, men concerning him, and they expelled him with his wife and everything that belonged to him. Chapter 13. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and everything that belonged to him and Lot with him to the Negev. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. He proceeded by stages from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Again, that's spelled A-I. To the place of the altar that he had made there at first, and there Abram called on the name of Adonai. Lot separates from Abram. Now Lot, who was going with Abram, also had sheep and cattle and tents. So the land could not support them living together because their possessions were many and they were not able to stay together. So there was a quarrel between the shepherds of Abram's livestock and the shepherds of Lot's livestock. Now the Canaanites and the Perizzites were living in the land then. So Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife between me and you or between my shepherds and yours since we are relatives. Isn't the whole land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If to the left, then I'll go to the right. And if to the right, then I'll go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the whole area surrounding the Jordan was well watered in its entirety before Adonai destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like Adonai's garden, like the land of Egypt, till you come to Zor. So Lot chose for himself the whole area surrounding the Jordan. Lot journeyed to the east, and they separated from each other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the valley. And he moved his tent from place to place near Sodom. But the people of Sodom were evil, very great sinners against Adonai. After Lot separated himself from, from him, Adonai said to Abram, Lift up your eyes now, and look from the place where you are to the north, south, east, and west. For all the land that you are looking at, I will give to you and to your seed forever. I will make your seed like the dust of the earth, so that if one could count the dust of the earth, then your seed could also be counted. Get up, walk about the land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent from place to place and came and dwelt by Mamre's large trees, 
which are Hebron, and there built an altar to Adonai. When you know, when you think about the 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 land that Adonai said he was going to give to Abram, I mean, there, that's that's way past uh, the 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 nation of, of, of Israel what it is today. The land is a huge, vast area in comparison, and that all belongs to Ab Ab Abraham and his descendants. Chapter 14, Abram rescues Lot. Now it came about in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariak, king of Elasar, Kedorlamar, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goim, Golim, uh, that they, they made war with Bera, king of Saddam, and Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zeb Zeboim, and the king of Bela, Bela this is Zor, Zor, Z O A R. All of these kings joined forces in the valley of, of the Siddam, this is the Salt Sea. For 12 years they had served Kedolomar, but in the 13th year they rebelled. In the 14th year, Kedolomar came with the kings who were with him, and they defeated the Raphaim in Ashtarot, Karnam, the Zuzum. In Ham. Now these are giants, Zizum, uh, Raphaim, and the Emim, Emim, in Shaveh, Kiryat Tam, and the Horites in the hill country of Ser, as far as El Paran, which is beside the wilderness. Then they came again to En Mishpat, this is Kadesh, and they subdued all the territory of the Amalekites, as well as the Amorites who lived in Hazazan, Tamar. The Raphaim were the Canaanite giants. Then the king of Saddam, Saddam the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zebo, Zeboim, and the king of Bela, this is Zor, went out and lined themselves up for battle with them in the valley of Siddam against Gedorlamar, king of Elam, title king of Go Golim, Goim, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariah, king of Elastar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sodom was full of tar pits, and as the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, they fell into them, and those who remained fled to the hills. So they took all of Sodom and Gomorrah's possessions and their food and left. They also took Lot, Abram's nephew, and his possessions, and they left as he was living in Sodom. Then a survivor came and told Abram, the Hebrew who was dwelling by the large trees belonging to Mamre, the Amorite, the brother of Eskel, and the brother of Aner, they were Abram's allies. When Abram heard that his kinsmen had been taken captive, he rallied his trained men, those born in his household, 318 of them, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Then he divided his servants against them at night, and he defeated them and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. He brought back all the possessions and also brought back his kinsman Lot and his possessions, as well as the women and the other people. Melech Sedek, king of Salem. Now, after he returned from defeating Gedorlamar and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shaba. This is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of El Elyon. Now this is El Elyon is the God most high or God. He blessed him and said, blessed be Abram by El Elyon, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be El Elyon, who gave over your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything, so he tithed them to him. Then the king of Saddam said to Abram, give me the people the possessions take you for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Saddam, I raise my hand in oath to Adonai El Elyon, creator of heaven and earth. Not a thread or even a sandal strap of all that is yours will I take. So you will not say I've made Abram rich. I claim nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who went with me. Aner, Eskel, and Mamre, let them take their share. So, Melech Tezedek. Yeshua is from the line of that is that is 
he is not of the other priestly order, um, the Aaronic line, um, the Levite line, I should say. He is from this line. And remember the description, he was a priest of El Elyon, the God Most High. And Yeshua is our high priest. And he's from, God, he's from God Most High. Chapter 15, Cutting a Covenant. After these things, the word of Adonai came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am your shield. You are very great reward. But Abram said, My Lord Adonai, what will you give me since I am living without children? And the heir of my household is Eliezer of Damascus. This was his servant. Uh, because uh, back in those days, if there was no natural heir, it would go to, to a faithful servant. So he, this is what Abram's thinking. Then Abram said, look, you have given me no seed. No, so a house-born servant is my heir. And behold, the word of Adonai came to him saying, this one will not be your heir, but in fact, one who will become your, one who will come from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up now at the sky and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, so shall your seed be. And he believed in Adonai and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am Adonai who brought you out from Ur of the Chaldeans in order to give you this land to inherit it. So he said, my Lord Adonai, how will I know that I will inherit it? Then he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old young cow, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young bird. So he brought all these to him and cut them in half and put each piece opposite the other, but he did not cut the birds. And the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. When the sun was about to set and a deep sleep fell on Abram, behold, terror of great darkness was falling upon him. Then he said to Abram, you know for certain that your seed will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. So he was foretelling about the captivity um, in Egypt. And they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. But I am going to judge the nation that they will serve. Afterward, they will go out with many possessions. But you, you will come to your fathers in peace. You will be buried at a good old age. Then in the fourth generation, they will return here. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun set and it became dark, behold, there was a smoking oven and a fiery torch that passed between these, place, these pieces. On that day, Adonai cut a covenant with Abram, saying, I give this land to your seed. From the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenite, the Kenzanites, the the Kenizzites, I'm sorry, and the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the, the Raphaites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, the Gershashites, and the Jebusites. So that's a lot of land when you map that out. So that was to be given to Abraham and Abraham's seed. Chapter 16, Hagar and Ishmael. Now, sorry, Abram's wife had not borne him children, but she had an Egyptian slave girl. Her name was Hagar. Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, look, now Adonai has prevented me from having children. Go please to my slave girl. Perhaps I'll get a son by her. Abram listened to Sarai's voice. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took her slave girl Hagar, the Egyptian, after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to Abram, her husband, to be his wife. Then he went to Hagar and she became pregnant. When she saw that she was pregnant in her eyes, her mistress was a little. So Sarai said to Abram, the wrong done to me is because of you. I myself placed my slave girl in your embrace now that she saw that she became pregnant. So in her eyes, I am belittled. May Adonai judge between you and me. Abram said to Sarai, look, your slave girl is in your hand. Do to her what is good in your eyes. So Sarai afflicted her and she fled from her presence. Then the angel of Adonai found her by the spring of water in the wilderness next to the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, sorry, I slay girl, where, ha where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, sorry, I. The angel of Adonai said, return to your mistress and humble yourself under her hand. Then the angel of Adonai said to her, I will bountifully multiply your seed 
and they will be too many to count. Then the angel of Adonai said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and about to bear a son, and you shall name him Ishmael. For Adonai has heard your affliction. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And away from all his brothers will he dwell. So she called Adonai, who was speaking to her, You are the God who sees me. For she said, Would I have gone here indeed looking for him who looks after me? That is why the well, the well is named the well of the living one who sees me. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. Then Hagar gave birth to a son for Abram, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael for Abraham. And unfortunately, this was not the promised son. Uh, Sarai got impatient and didn't wait for the promised son, which was Isaac. Chapter 17, Covenant of Circumcision. When Abram was 99 years old, Ananai appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Continually walk before me and you will be blameless. My heart's desire is to make my covenant between me and you, and then I will multiply you exceedingly much. El Shaddai means God Almighty. Abram fell on his face and God spoke with him saying, for my part, because my covenant is with you, you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer will your name be Abram, but your name will be Abraham, because I make you the father of a multitude of nations. Yes, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make you into nations and kings will come forth from you. Yes, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, an everlasting covenant, in order to be your God and your seed's God after you. I will give to you and to your seed after you the land where you are an outsider, the whole land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, as for you, my covenant you must keep, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant that you must keep between me and you and your seed after you. All your males must be circumcised. You must be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and this will become a sign of the covenant between me and you. Also your eight-day-olds must be circumcised, every male throughout your generations, including a houseborn slave or a slave but with money from any foreigner who is not of your seed, your houseborn slave and your purchased slave must surely be circumcised. So my covenant will be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. But the uncircumcised male who is, who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her by the name of Sarai. Rather, Sarah is her name. And I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son from her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to me, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of the peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said to his heart, Will a son be born to a one hundred year old man, or will Sarah, who is ninety years old, give birth? So Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live before you, but God said, On the contrary, Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son, and you must name him Isaac. So that was, he made it clear, Ishmael was not the one that was chosen uh, for this covenant that God was giving. He wanted it to be with Abraham's wife, Sarah, and he promised that. So I will confirm my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. See, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and I will multiply him very, very much. He will father twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this set time next year. When he finished speaking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all of his houseborn slaves, and all of his purchased slaves, every male among the men of Abraham's house, 
and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins on, his, on this very same day, just as God had spoken with him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and his son Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. On this very same day, Abraham and Ishmael, his son, were circumcised. Also, all the men of his house, house-born slaves, and the slaves purchased from a foreigner were circumcised with him. And that is the end of this Torah portion for this week. So we're going to recap um, briefly here, and then we will get into the half Torah and then close out the first segment of Shabbat. Parashat Lechlecha, go forth or go out. Adonai said to Abraham, go forth from your country, your people and your father's household to the land that I will show you. He was getting him out of Haran. And he took, um, he, he took a lot with him. Our last Torah reading, uh, Noah concluded with the genealogy of Shem, Noah's son. The genealogy ended with Terah, the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Terah took his son Abram and Abram's wife, Sarai, as well as Lot, the son of Haran, who died, um, who died in, out of Ur of the Chaldeans and headed towards the land of Canaan. Instead of reaching their destination, they settled at Haran, where Terah, lit, Terah that was uh, uh, Abram's father, lived out the rest of his days. So in this week, Abraham, Abram is commanded of God to carry on with his father's unfinished mission to reach the land of Canaan, um, the land given to the, promise, given to the promised land at this time. The covenant of God in the promised land Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were in the land. But, you know, Adonai told them, I will give you this to, this, off, this land to your offspring. So um, God reassured Abram that one day it would belong to his offspring. That's the children of Israel. We may see a clear correlation to the political situation in the Middle East today. Um, actually, the Palestinians have gained control of large tracts of land within Israel that belongs to Israel because God gave it to them, which leaves many Israelis wanting to see the promised land divided. Uh, they believe that establishing a separate Palestinian state be besides the Jewish state will create peace, but it will never. It will never. And it wasn't really meant for them anyway. And unfortunately, many around the globe think that that's a solution, but it's not. This is not what God made a covenant with or about. He, he actually distinctly uh, pointed out the land that was to belong to Benai Israel. So it's <laughs> rivers of tears and pools of blood have been shed in order to reclaim the God-given land that was given by God. Um, so... It continues to go on and on and on at this point. You know, there is no way that the children of Israel survived the threat of extermination throughout 2,000 years of persecution uh, and all the hatred towards them just to be driven out once and for all by the, by the, relig by the radicals. No, only if God breaks his covenant. And God himself said it was an everlasting covenant. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. He said this to Abraham, the whole of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Very, very clear. Later, we're going we're gonna to hear this though to Isaac. To, to you, Isaac, and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. To Jacob, who he later named Israel, I am the Lord, the, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you, Jacob, and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Same thing he said to Abraham. So God does not break covenants. So we must be clear to understand that. Abram did not have 
to do a thing to establish this covenant with God. God did it. Um, in fact, in chapter 15 of Genesis, God alone walked through the animals that Abraham offered, indicating that the covenant he cut with Abraham was unconditional, everlasting, forever. And God actually caused a deep sleep to fall on Abram when he made the covenant with him, probably to emphasize that God alone is making this unconditional promise and also to prevent Abram from walking through it. In ancient covenant practices, both parties would walk through the offering if it were if it, if there was if it was conditional. With so many scriptures declaring God's everlasting promise, our claim to this land is not political at all. Polit the, they have no right to it, but it is by divine right. Of course, there's great opposition to God's word. The Canaanites had their weapons and allies, and so do the enemies of Israel today. Both gained some temporary victories in their efforts to claim the land as their own, but ultimately God owns the land and can give it to whomever he wishes. He already did. His everlasting covenant is with Abraham, and it will stand. Walking the land as the first Hebrew arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. When God commanded Abraham to walk the length and breadth of the land, it was not just for a little sightseeing stroll. It fulfilled a legal custom in ancient times to claim ownership of a property by walking through it. Egyptian and Hittite kings would regularly leave their grand palaces to take a ceremonial walk through their countryside in order to confirm their own ownership of the land. In Mesopotamia, according to ancient records, the seller of a property would lift his foot off the land and purposefully set the buyer's foot upon it. This may further explain the cultural context of the scripture in which God promises to give Joshua every place the sole of his foot treads upon. And well, I will give you every place where, you're, where you set your foot as I promised Moses, he says to Joshua in Joshua 1, verse 3. Legally then, when Abram walked the length and breadth of the land, breadth of the land, I'm sorry, he took possession of it for himself and his descendants as an eternal possession. So, whereas Noah walked with God, Abram walked before God, paving the way for the world to come to the knowledge of faith in the one true God. Abram had an ability to cross over borders. He not only crossed from Mesopotamia to Canaan, he courageously crossed from a world of idol worship to a world in which the one true God was worshipped instead. Yes, his father his father made idols, actually, Terah, Abram's father. So they they that's they were they were into idolatry at that time. Um, of course, you know, the, the Ten Commandments were not given yet. This is, this is long before Moses. Uh, the world stood on one side, and he stood with the truth on the other. But Abram was a friend to God. He crossed over into his destiny, and his descendants inherited the reward and blessing, as well as the characteristic of being those who cross over. For this reason, Abram became the first person to be called an ivory, I V. I'm sorry, L L Livri, L V R I, the one who crossed over. The word comes from the Hebrew word la avor to cross over and is transliterated into English simply as Hebrew. La Kaleka, therefore, is one of the most exciting chapters in the Torah um, since it chronicles the adventures of the first Hebrew with God. And may we too come to this life altering where we cross over into a new exciting adventure in our life with him. Then we see Abraham wins the war of kings. Um, when Lot was captured in, in, you know, in that battle, uh, he was able to, to rescue Lot and, and his family. And Lot, th th then Lot was with him, but there was strife between the, the Abraham's shepherds and Lot's shepherds. So, Abraham gave him gave Lot first choice. They needed to separate, and Lot chooses the best for himself. Um, the green fertile plains of Jordan near Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, I'm sorry, this this is before the kidnapping of Lot. I'm sorry, I got a little bit ahead of myself here. And Lot Lot did that, and the grass. Uh, actually, the grass as as we get the the 
the saying, the grass is not always greener. It may look like it's greener on the other side, but uh, it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better uh, because what Lot was going into with Sodom and Gomorrah was not better. Um, and he, of course, when there was a battle between the kings, um, Sodom and Gomorrah's possessions and everything that was, uh, everyone that was there were captured. And that's where Lot was captured. But Abram got word of this and, um, you know, actually had allies and they were able to rescue Lot. So um, Lot was family, Mish Mishpaka. Just as with Abram, is Israelis do not allow to, uh, they, they don't succumb to fear or freeze at the possible consequences of protecting uh, others and protecting their families. So um, he went he went to rescue his family member. So um, Abram's life from from age seventy five to ninety nine is actually addressed here in Parashat Lechlecha. He lived most of his life without really knowing his destiny, um, believe it or not, not until God revealed it to him through a covenant that led to a name change. And Abraham waited again a long time before he began to see its, the fulfillment through a son named Isaac. In this parashat, God told him, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. With the addition, um, with the addition of only one Hebrew letter, the letter Hey, Abram, which meant exalted father, became Abraham, exalted father of a multitude of nations. The Hebrew consonant uh, is often used as an abbreviation for the name of God and is found twice in God's personal name. So by adding this letter Hey uh, to Abraham's name, God added himself as Abba father to Abraham's nature, character, and destiny. So um, the name of God is found in Abraham. By adding the letter hey to Abraham's wife's name, it changed from Sarai, my princess, is, and that's the name of, the, the, that's the meaning of Sarai, to Sarah, princess, princess of the whole world. For this reason, it is traditionally believed that a change of name can change one's destiny. God did not only promise Abraham the land of Israel, but also that he would be a blessing to the nations. Today, there are countless ways in which God fulfills this promise to Abraham through the nation of Israel. Israel's technology, agriculture, medical innovations, and advances are, are helping people around the globe. Uh, but the most meaningful fulfillment of this promise is the word of God um, that Benaiah Israel, uh, the, the children of Israel, have faithfully protected and brought to the world, as well as eternal salvation through faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Yeshua, the Messiah, from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, for me, for all of us that are born again and saved, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through our faith, God is protecting us by his power until we receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. God's destiny for Abraham to become father of a multitude of nations, even Gentile nations, is fulfilled in a significant way through Yeshua, who is a direct descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is seen in Matthew 1, uh, verses 2 to 17. Anyone from any tribe, tongue, or nationality who declares faith in Yeshua becomes an heir of Abraham. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. And if you are Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And that's in Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 to 29. And that's a quick recap. Um, we're going to do the half Torah portion, and then I'll recap both this and the half Torah portion before we take a break. And then we'll come back with. Part two.
So we're going to go to the half Torah portion. And this week we are in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 through chapter 41, verse 29. Comfort, proclaim good news. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to the heart of Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed. For she has received from Adonai's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley will be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground will be a plain and the rugged terrain smooth. The glory of Adonai will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of Adonai has spoken. A voice is saying, cry out. So I said, what shall I cry out? All flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the breath of Adonai blows on it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Get yourself up on a high, high mountain. You who bring good news to Zion, lift up your voice with strength. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Look, Adonai Elohim comes with might, with his arm rolling for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he tends his flock. He gathers the lambs in his arms, carries them in his bosom, and gently guides nursing ewes. And we're talking about Yeshua here in, in these passages. Prepare the way of Adonai. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And, and this last this last segment, absolutely, this is Yeshua. This is Jesus. Who is like him? Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand, or measured out heaven with a span, or calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, or weighed the mountains in, his, in, in scales? We can't say that. God has done that. Or the hills in a balance. Who can fathom the Ruach Adonai, or instruct him as his counselor? With whom did he consult and who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice or taught him knowledge? Who informed him about the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a, like a drop from a bucket and count as a speck of dust on the scales. Behold, the islands weigh as fine dust. The Lebanon is not enough to burn or its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are, are as nothing before him. By him, they are counted null and void. To whom? Then will you liken God? To what likeness will you compare him? To an idol? A craftsman casts it. A goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. One too poor for such an offering chooses wood that will, will rot. He looks for a skilled craftsman to prepare him an idol that will not totter. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? He sits above the circle of the earth. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the skies like a curtain, spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He reduces princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth a confusion. Scarcely are they planted. Scarcely are they sown. Scarcely their stem takes root in the earth. When he blows on them, and they wither. And a storm carries them off as stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. The one who brings out their host by number, the one who calls them all by name because of his great strength and vast power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from Adonai and the justice do me escapes the notice of my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Adonai is the eternal God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow tired or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives stretch. Uh, he, I'm sorry. He gives strength to the weary, and to one without vigor, he adds might. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But they who wait for Adonai will renew their strength. They will soar up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. 
because Adam and I will give them strength. It's a lot said here, you know, but by waiting on the will of God, he, he renews us. He, he gives us our strength that we need when we do get weary because, you know, we're in the human fleshly body. And look at the world that we live in today. It, it can make you very weary, but we get our strength from God. And God does, does see the evil wicked that is being done and who is perpetrating all this evil. And no, it is not unnoticed and God will deal with them. They may think they have gotten away with it, but no one is greater than God Almighty. Absolutely not. He created everything, so they are not going to get away with, with this. And he, he can reduce them to rubble. Uh, you know, the storm can carry them off as stubble. He can, he can make ju the judges of the earth a confusion. He reduces princes to nothing. And then I raises up kings and he reduces them. The coming conqueror in chapter 41. Be silent before me, O islands. Let peoples renew their strength. Let them draw near and let, then let them speak. Let us come together for judgment who has stirred up one from the east. He calls justice to his feet. He gives nations over to him and subdues kings. He makes them like dust with his sword, as driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them, passing on safely by a path his feet has not traveled. Who has performed and done it, calling forth the generations from the beginning? I, Adonai, am the first and the last. I am he. The coastlands have seen and fear. The ends of the earth tremble. They draw near and come. Each one helps his neighbor, and each says to his brother, Be strong. The craftsman encourages the smith who smooths with his hammer, who strikes with the anvil, says of the, the soldering, it's good as he fas fastens it with nails so that it will not totter. My servant, my friend, but you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, I took hold of you from the ends of the earth and called from its uttermost parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you, not rejected you. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who were angry at you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who quarrel with you will be as nothing and perish. Though you will look for those who contended with you, you will not find them. Those who warred against you will be as nothing at all. For I am Adonai, your God, who upholds your right hand, who says to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not. You worm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you. It is a declaration of Adonai, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Look, I will make you a threshing sledge, new with sharp double-edged spikes. You will thresh the mountains and grind them up, and you will make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them, and a wind will carry them away. A storm wind will scatter them, but you will rejoice in Adonai. Your, you will glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and the needy ask for water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst. I, Adonai, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the bare hills and springs in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land into fountains of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the, the acacia tree, the myrtle and the olive tree. I will set in the desert the cypress tree and the pine together with the box tree so they may see and know, consider and understand the hand of Adonai has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. Challenge to idolaters. Present your cases, Adonai. Bring forth your reasons, says the king of Jacob. Let them bring forth and tell us what will happen. The former things, what were they? Tell us that we may consider them and know their outcome, or announce to us things to come. Declare the, the things coming afterwards, so we may know that you are, you are gods. And this is a little g, God, so it's not it's a challenge to, you know, the little G's. Indeed, do good or do evil, that we may all see and be awestruck. Behold, you are nothing, and your work is null. Whoever chooses you is loathsome. I have stirred up one from the north, and he has come. From the rising of the sun, he will call upon my name. He will trample rulers as on mortar, like a potter treading clay. Who told this from the beginning so that we may know, or from former times so we may say he is right? 
In fact, no one foretold it. In fact, no one announced it. In fact, no one heard your words. First it was to Zion. Behold, here they are. And to Jerusalem, I will give a herald of good news. But when I look, there is no one. There is no counselor among them. When I ask them, they have no response. Indeed, they are all a delusion. Their works are null. Their molten images are wind and waste. Hmm. And that is the end of the half tour portion. So I'm going to tie this all together. We're going we're gonna to go back and recap the Torah once more and then the half Torah. And then I spoke to Abram, commanding him to go from his land, from his birthplace and his father's house to the land that he would show. And God then said he would make him into a great nation. Abram and his wife Sarai, accompanied uh, by the nephew Lot, journeyed to the land of Canaan, where Abram builds an altar and continues to spread the message of a one God. Famine forces them to depart for Egypt, where Sarai is taken to Pharaoh, and Abram actually has her proclaimed to be his sister to prevent death, uh, but a plague prevents the Egyptian king from touching her uh, and convinces him to return her to. Uh, Abram to compensate the brother, the brother revealed as husband with gold, silver, and cattle, and they were driven out of the land. And back in the land of Canaan, Lot separated from Abram and settled in, in the evil city of Sodom, where he was captive uh, when the, the the battle of the kings occurred uh, against the mighty armies of Kedalimar and his three allies conquered the five cities of the Sodom Valley which is Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abram had a settle set out with a small band to rescue his nephew and defeat the four kings, and is blessed by Melchizedek, the king of Salem, or Jerusalem, and God seals the covenant between the parts with Abram in which the exile and persecution of the people of Israel is foretold, and the Holy Land is bequeathed to them as their eternal heritage. Still childless, ten years after their arrival in the land, Sarai tells Abram to marry her maidservant, Hagar, and Hagar conce conceives and becomes insolent toward her mistress and then flees when Sarai treats her harshly and an angel convinces her to return and tell her that her son will be a father to a populous, populous nation and to name him Ishmael. And Ishmael is born in Abram's 86th year. Thirteen years later, God changes Abr Abram's name to Abraham, the father of multitudes, and we went over that, Sar Sarai to Sarah, uh, and promises that a son will be born to them. And from this child, um, they are to name him Isaac. And, and the name Isaac means will we'll laugh. And it will stem the, and from Isaac would stem the great nation from which God will establish his special bond. And Abraham is commanded to circumcise himself and his descendants as a sign of the covenant between between uh, God and and Abraham and the people from then on, then on out. Abraham immediately complies, circumcising himself and all the males of the household. In the half Torah, the half Torah discusses Abraham's journey to the land of Canaan at God's behest and and touches upon Abraham's miraculous battle against the four kings, both of which are described in this, in, you know, in the Torah portion, as we just said, and the prophet Isaiah addressed Israel's complaint. Um, my way of serving God has been ignored by the Lord and from God, my judgment passed. It was unrewarded. Isaiah reminded Israel of the creator's greatness and the, and the time will come when he will give the tired strength and to him who has no strength, he will increase strength. And you shall become tired and weary, and young men shall stumble. But those who put their hope in the Lord shall renew their vigor. They shall rise like, uh, like on the wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They, they will walk and not tire. They were waiting for, for, for God and, and feeling weary. But um, he was telling them, you know, wait on the will of God because he will be your strength. There is no comprehension of his wisdom, and as such, at times we cannot understand why he chooses to delay the reward of the righteous. And I think we're at, in those times now when we're, we've been crying out to, to Adonai because we see all this wickedness, but we know that he hears us, he loves us, and 
we need to be renewed in strength. He has a perfect timing for everything. And even though we are getting weary of, of the wickedness in this world, and, you know, as, as I've said numerous times, you know, we're at a time where good is being called evil and evil is being called good, and it is insane. It's our world is completely turned upside down, and the devil seems to be running, the devil and his helpers seem to be running all over the place doing, doing these things that make absolutely no sense to us, the children of God. But God does see everything, and, and we need to anchor our faith in him. And in his perfect timing, he is going to deal with this. He will deal with this. And the Hathor then turns its attention to the idolatrous nations of the world. Isaiah reminds them of Abraham's greatness, how after arriving in Canaan, he pursued and defeated four mighty kings. And the land saw and feared the ends of the earth quake. Nevertheless, the nations who witnessed these miracles do not abandon their ways. The idle craftsman strengthened the smith. The one who smooths the idol with the hammer strengthened the one who wields the sledgehammer. And the one who glues its coating says it's good, and he strengthened it with nails that it would not move. But God promised the, the, the Benaiah Israel that he would reward them for their loyalty to him. Do not fear, for I am with you. Be not discouraged, for I am your God. Behold all those incensed against you shall be ashamed and confounded. Those who quarreled with you shall be, be lost. So take heart. Take your strength in God. Do not waver in what you know is right and what the Lord, what is biblical. Do not go against it. Um, stay strong because God knows that you are, you are not bowing to the gods of men. And we cannot. We cannot do that. And that's the end of, uh, that is the end of our Torah portion, our half Torah portion. I just want to, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in our world that actually go back to this. Like the, 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 the people that will, you know, just think that, oh, yes, we can do a two, two state nation. Well, that is not what God says. So they need to be careful. And those that are pushing that need to be careful too, because that is not what God said. God distinctly gave a span of land to Abraham and his descendants, period. That was an everlasting covenant um, to the people. He made promises, you know, to the people. And he also said, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. And that stands to today. And yes, you know, Israel, Israel has done things for the nations. There's been times that there's does that when disaster struck that the first people there to actually help may be Israel. You know, there's been in earthquakes and and such, and yeah, they have lent it, lend a helping hand. And um, so yes, they do bless the nations because they're blessed of God. So be careful who you curse. You don't curse the apple of God's eye. And yes, the, this is an everlasting covenant that has never and will never be broken because God is not like man. He doesn't break promises and covenants and vows. We're going to say a prayer and take a break and then come back with the second half of, of Shabbat service. Father God, we thank you. We thank thank you. We thank you that you are such an awesome God, that you set an example of, of keeping truth, of being true to, to your word, because you are truthful, you are faithful, and that's an example for, for humanity to follow, at, because you are our Father. That we need to be careful of covenants and vows and promises that we make, that we don't break them either. And truth will always stand. The truth will always stand, and you are a mighty God who sees the evil and, and, and the lies that are going on in our world today. And it will not be unnoticed by you. And you will deal with it. And we have faith that you will because you are a holy God who will not tolerate this. We love you, Father God, for that. We love you so much that you love us, your children, and your hand is always on us. Love you so much. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And take a break and we'll come back to the second segment of
Shabbat service for this week.